Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to make this cliff material in just 15 notes over a few minutes. Um, we'll be using Material Maker 0 0.97. Uh, if you're new to Material Maker you should watch my introduction to Material Maker video before watching this one. Alright, so let's get started. So uh, I've just um, set the, the shape to be a sphere here, just as I think that'll work a bit better with this material. Um, let's start with um, reading in some uh, reference. So uh, I found this uh, picture here online just with a bit, bit of Googling. Um, and I won't try to recreate this precisely, but I'll use it for a bit of inspiration. Um, so as a base, um, we'll use some uh, FBM noise. Um, and uh, I'm definitely seeing some horizontal patterns here. So I'll try and uh, adjust this to be a bit more stretched uh in that direction and we'll add in one fold to give this um bunched up uh, look for it now to make this look a bit more interesting we'll um, run the noise through a warp node um, and we'll use the noise uh, to drive it as well as a height map um, and this is a bit too intense so we'll just uh, make this a bit less it's just to add a bit of interest to it um, let's uh, start out with trying to um, run this into a normal map node and let's see what that actually looks like okay and um, we can also uh, make an inverted version of that and run that in as the depth so we get some parallax going on Okay, so let's add some color to this. Um, so the way I'll uh, do this is I'll um, create a gradient. Um, and I'll rotate that 90 degrees. Um, and then I'll just um, find a place with some interesting color variants here. I'll uh, select down here and then I can uh, drag along here. And we'll transfer this in here. And then we have a, a pretty nice gradient. Uh, one thing I just want to make sure is um, that it uh, tiles. So I just want to copy the value from uh, one side and transfer it over here. Just so it, uh, it actually um, it tiles on the y-axis. And this looks okay, but I think it'll look even better if we do a smooth interpolate on it. Um, so now this doesn't look like much, but if we uh, take the warp node here and copy that, and um, then we distort this gradient in the same way, we end up with something that looks quite interesting. And if we transfer that in here, we'll you can see that already looks way better. Um, now we could uh, we could probably add just another FBM noise with some more colors and just mix those two in just to make it more complicated and a bit fancier if you wanted to. But this is a fine base. Now another trick I sometimes like to uh, do is um, on the height map um, run it through a tonality node to give it a bit more of an um, a bit more volume in the shape. So we can try and do that. So if we uh, choose a tonality node here and um, then we can go in and we can select a curve from one of the presets so I'll uh, choose ease out here and that'll just um, make everything more um, sort of uh, spherical so if we uh, change that over here you can see it becomes sort of a bit more bubbly and bulbous rather than uh, rather than sort of um, linear in its interpretation interpolation and um, so um, what you'll often see with the uh, with cliffs as well is that um, the parts that protrude are a bit rougher and maybe sort of uh, gets a bit white from from being worn so where uh, we can uh, imitate that with a, a smooth curvature node so we'll just take um, our new height here and we'll run it into the smooth curvature and we can uh, adjust this a little bit maybe just uh, 
sort of just capture the parts that stick out a lot. And then we can use a step node here. And we can just find the parts that we want. Something like this, maybe. Um, so we can take this value and blend it together. Um, so that'll probably be the other way around. So and then we just need to use the right blend node, uh, blend mode, which will be screen probably. So um, so that means we can sort of make the protruding parts a little bit wider, and we'll run that into the albedo instead. Um, <clears throat> and we can also use this um, to drive the um, uh, the roughness map. Um, so we'll just use a colorize node, and we'll say that. Um, yeah, the things that really protrude will be all white and and it'll be a bit more gray elsewhere and we'll put that into the roughness that looks pretty good now this is already looking pretty good but um, when you zoom in you can definitely see that uh, it's a bit smooth looking for um, for a cliff face so um, we could try and uh, increase the iterations a bit that uh, definitely helps. We might need to um, set the normal map for higher resolution as well. Um, but uh, I think I'll actually instead go for um, adding a second uh, layer of uh, noise, just some, some tiny noise here. So we'll use some Perlin and maybe 64, to set the persistence pretty high. And this will just add a little bit no of noise into everything. So um, we'll take um, our final Hide here, and we'll just uh, do a blend, and add this in with a multiple, um, and this will have to be like really low, so like um, something like this. Um, if we just increase our resolutions here, let's just see what it actually does when we put it in here. You can see you get all these uh, micro details. Maybe three was too little, five. That looks good. Um, and we can um, look here at the curvature. We can also run it in there and that just gives us some, some tiny little details. Um, we might even take it in to the, um, oh, into the colorize as well. Um, not the colorize, the roughness that we had before. So this was our roughness and we will just make it a little bit more. Oh, that can probably take a bit sort of more variation just so the roughness isn't so even. Okay. Just made it a bit more interesting. Uh, now all we really need to do is uh, add a little bit of shadows into the crevices and we'll do that um, very easily by just uh, grabbing the, the height here and running that into an occlusion node. <clears throat> and we'll just uh, adjust that until we find something we like and run that into the ambient occlusion output. And that just adds all those uh, little shadows. Um, and you could, you know, um, Use a couple of these with uh, with different radiuses to um, to capture more little details and add them together if you wanted to make it even fancier looking. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was a, a little quick one just to get back into things. Um, I hope I'll be making lots of videos again soon. Uh, it's been a bit slow lately. I've uh, I've been very busy, um, but uh, I want to thank all my uh, my lovely patrons: um, Rodzilla, David Masiaka. Andres Hernandez, Sneaky AMX, Mike King, Decaying Dev, Alex Ditinski, Elias Eskelinen, Joseph Cotrombone, Oscar Johnson, Winston, Space G Zero, and Marcus Richter. Uh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much.